It's yeah. going to be very exciting. We are now five hours away from being off to the races in Nevada, where, of course, the state's GOP supporters will caucus for their candidates. But as Nevada stares us right in the face with a prize of 30 delegates, the big kahuna for both Republicans and Democrats is next Tuesday, otherwise known as Super Tuesday. That's when citizens from 12 states and one territory will head to the polls to make their decision. So if Nevada has 30 delegates, 595 delegates are up for grabs on Super Tuesday. Is that why Ohio Governor John Kasich and Florida Senator Marco Rubio have already moved on from Nevada? They've left Las Vegas. Fox News political analyst Ed Rollins is here with us, along with Chris Hahn, former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer. Gentlemen, I, look, no wonder Kasich and Rubio have moved on. It looks like, Ed, Donald Trump is in the lead here. I assume Donald's going to win. He's had good momentum there. He's led in the, the, there aren't very many polls in, in, in uh, Nevada, mm -hmm. but so far he's been leading. Both, both Cruz and, and Rubio are fighting for that second place, and that will give them claim on the second place. Rubio's starting to get a lot of money people, a lot of uh, name people who are endorsing him, but Cruz still has that strong grassroots organization, and both of them have the best operatives in the state on their side. So it's going to be a, right down to the wire. Uh, again, uh, Trump's going to win it, but who comes in second is going to have some momentum. Well, it's not the Democrats' night tonight, Chris, but surely you, you have a sense of who might take second place. Yeah, look, I think it's probably going to be Rubio, but I don't think these primaries are like a uh, second grade soccer league. There shouldn't be a medal for second place here. Donald Trump's got all the momentum going into Super Tuesday. Somebody should have put some time into Nevada. These caucuses are kind of wacky. If you could bring your vote out, as Ed Rollins is one of the best in the country at doing, you know, you could bring your vote to the table and you could get, you could win this. You could steal it. There's only 8% of the people turning out. If you get your people to the polls, you win. Who's second place here? And, and I think Chris is right, but it has come to that, hasn't it? Ooh, who gets second place now, right, Ed? Well, it does. And, and obviously, second place in South Carolina didn't matter because nobody got any delegates except right. for, except for uh, Well, who uh, gets Trump. it this time? Uh, I, I think Rubio probably comes in second in this time, even though Cruz had a stronger organization. I think the chaos yesterday with getting rid of Rick Tyler, uh, you know, added, added to the story. Uh, and I think to a certain Well, let's extent. talk about that. Uh, that was the controversy that broke during this hour yesterday. And does it hurt his momentum? Because now Donald Trump, of course, is tweeting. Well, I, I don't know if you saw this, Chris, but he's now <laughs> tweeting saying, uh, throw that guy under the bus. Can you believe it? And here Rick Tyler was such a great employee for, for uh, uh, Ted Cruz. I mean, listen, I, I, we like, I we like I him. I don't, I, don't know all the, I don't know all the details. I do know Rick Tyler, and he's a first-rate professional. He was Gingrich's guy. Right, right, right. And my sense is you can't take someone who's been one of your principal players from start to finish and throw them out. He may have made a mistake. You throw him out, you basically create chaos in your campaign. You don't want to create any chaos at this point in time. Chris? You know, you know what, bottom line is he threw them out for doing what that campaign has been doing all along. They have been using whatever they can, whether it's fully factual or not, to get ahead in elections. It's probably how they won Iowa. So to throw him under the bus really speaks to the character argument of Ted Cruz, which his opponents have been making for the last couple of weeks. Does he have a steadfast character? Is he the right guy to be president of the United States? It's kind of hard to balance that line and then appeal to evangelicals, which is why he didn't win them in South Carolina, in my opinion. Okay, let's get to Rubio then. He's getting a big vote of confidence today. He is racking them and stacking them when it comes to endorsements. And, and here's a, an endorsement of a different kind. The Koch brothers, who are known as sort of the voice of conservatism right now, their top political advisor, Mark Short, is now on board with Rubio, how big a deal should we make of That's that? That's a very big deal. I, I don't, I don't care about the Bob Doles of the world or what have you. We're wonderful men, but their endorsement doesn't mean as much as the people with money. And the Koch right. brothers obviously have. have the, uh, Rubio needs the resources to stay in this race a long time. And what you don't want with all the big names endorsing you, not the money people, but the big names, is you don't want to become the establishment candidate in this cycle. You need the money of the establishment, but you don't want right. to, you don't want the establishment. Uh, I need to go to this, Chris. It just broke the past uh, couple of minutes, and that is that uh, there's a federal judge who is saying, he has ruled that the State Department officials and top aides to Hillary Clinton uh, absolutely should be questioned under oath about whether they intentionally thwarted federal open records laws by using or allowing the use of the private email server through Secretary Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State. What does she do in advance of the South Carolina primary on Saturday to turn this one around? Well, she has to be Look, very... I, oh, oh, Chris, okay. go ahead, Chris. Chris. No, I, I think she fully embraces it. Let's embrace it. You know, the judge is saying, let's have some open, let's put some sunlight on this. Let's put some sunlight on it. I don't think she did anything wrong. There were no laws broken. We have a constitution that prevents ex post facto law. There was no law that said that she couldn't use a private server when she used that server. There might have been laws that have been passed since. 
So let's talk about it. I don't think anybody did anything wrong, and I think the more we put out of it, the less this will be a story. Well, if she has truly nothing to hide, Ed, then I think well, Chris well, the, is right the, on the, that. the danger, obviously, when you put federal judges, FBI agents, all the rest of it under oath, it creates a stigma. And she already has serious problems with integrity. Equally as important, when someone's swearing you under oath, you face perjury. You have to be very careful in what you say all the way through. And it's not enough just to say, I've never told a lie. You can't tell a lie when you catch your hand up in, the, up in the air. Okay. Great to see both of you. you. Ed, you say that Rubio has the shot for tonight. And Chris? Uh, after Trump. Trump after Trump. Trump. Yeah, I know it's coming. I agree. Place. I agree 100 percent. I agree 100 percent with that. I think Rubio is going to come in second, but I don't think there's a prize for second. And unless Rubio starts winning soon, there are going to be people who are going to wonder how we can make an open convention to stop Trump and maybe pick somebody other than Rubio or Cruz. Maybe a Paul Ryan wins it at the convention. Well, yeah, that name's been floated around a lot today. Thanks to both of you. We Thank so you. appreciate it. We.